uh, we're going to get right into the service, going to turn this good group over. We done heard just a little preview of their singing. And so, they, man, if you can't tap your toe to their singing, something will be wrong with your foot. So you'll probably need prayer for your foot. Something you don't get in your feet tonight. So uh, we're looking forward to having a great time. And then Brother Tony was just talking just a little bit while ago about his dad. His dad is still six foot four. And, you know, and still preaching. And still barefoot. I was going to throw that in. He was known around his area as a barefoot preacher. And uh, he didn't want nothing. I guess he took it literally whenever God said, Moses, you're standing on holy ground. So I guess he just run with that. And he has been known to run a few times. I've seen him run and have a big time. And so uh, we're just glad to have him. This is his son, Tony, and his wife. And wherever, there she is. And uh, so we're glad to have them. And the, I don't know if the relatives, friends, or whatever that make up their group. But we're just glad to have them. Maybe Tony will introduce them to us or whatever. But I, I want to ask you if you will stand with us and let's uh, ask the Lord if we could just come into his presence tonight. And you just pray right now in your own way. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you tonight, dear God, for your blessings. Lord, we ask you to move in a mighty, mighty way. find the name of the Lord Jesus. We're going to, this offering is going to go to our group tonight. And we just want you to ask the Lord as, as we pray over the offering tonight, ask the Lord, Lord, speak to my heart and tell me what to do. And Lord, I'll be uh, faithful and true and I'll obey your voice tonight. Praise the Lord. Have me know it's good to listen to God. Amen. I tell you what, oh, Ezekiel, uh, the Lord said, I want you to go out there, Ezekiel, and I want you to prophesy. You know what? It's a good thing to obey what God says. You know what happens when you do what God says? You'll see, see God do results right before your eyes. Praise the Lord. So we just want you to uh, ask the Lord as we pray this evening uh, to speak to your heart. And you just give as God has pressed upon your heart to give tonight. Brother Bill is our pressure in this section. And we're so glad to have him and his wife with us tonight. We want to ask him to ask the blessing over the offering tonight. Father, we're so glad to be in your house tonight. Thank you for your many blessings and your goodness, Lord. Father, we pray that you'll take this offering and bless it and use it highly to your to the furtherance of your kingdom. We'll give you all the glory for it in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Help us sing if you know it. We're just going to do this one song while he's taking up the offering. Well, I got joy in my heart and joy in my mind.
right. I don't know about you, but I still got joy in my heart. Praise the Lord. Since that day, I tell you what'll do you good. It does me good. It might work for you too. If you'll remember back that day or that night, whenever it was, whenever you made your way to a place that you made an altar and you bowed your knees before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and you said, Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> come into my heart. <laughs> uh, wash away all this burden, heavy load that I'm carrying because I realize I need a Savior and I can't do it by myself. Do you remember that day when you quit walking by yourself and you started walking with the Lord? I tell you what, it'll do you good to rem uh, reminisce on those times. You know, a lot of times people want to reminisce on the on the bad parts of their life before they come across. You know, the Apostle Paul said, forget those things. Yeah. Forget those things. Let's go on and think about the good things that God's going to do for our life. You know, our problem is we're not looking to the future. We're looking too far behind us. Yeah. Listen, let's look to the future and see what God's got for us. Yeah. He's got a bunch of stuff for us. So we yeah. want you to just get in tonight. And worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't go home and say, Lord, I wish I'd got in better. Yeah. My, go home and say, Lord, I've done all I knew how to do to worship you tonight. And boy, I tell you what, you talk about sleeping good, you'll be sleeping good and restful. And God will give you a good blessing. And I believe that with all of my heart. I believe that. Praise the Lord. All right, Brother Tony and you guys, just come on and sing the roof down. I get excited every time we get invited to a church, and it's been a couple weeks. We kind of had a few weeks off, and the rest is great, but isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. 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 The, the uh, goal of our ministry is for you to leave here feeling like you've been in church. So if you feel like tapping your feet, you do that. If you feel like clapping your hands, you do that. If you feel like standing up and praising the Lord,
please play piano. <laughs> oh no, oh no, we want you to sing. <laughs> but it does do good at piano, don't y'all think? <laughs> this whole band, we're so proud of our band tonight. We couldn't do it without them. Thank y'all for coming here tonight. We had a good time in the morning. The song's called I'll Take It. You know, we're on the road a lot. Tonight is 181 churches in six years. That's a lot. And some of those we, some of those are repeats. But, you know, we give out a lot. And it was time for Tony to take in some. And he got away with some, some Christian men. And he was able to get away with the Lord. And on one of the few text messages I got over the weekend, he said, I'm telling you, we're going to have church at Charleston. So we're going to have church at Charleston. And I'm going to cry. And we're going to lay it all out for the Lord tonight.
Pennsylvania and stuff, y'all. Look here, no cord. That's pretty cool, ain't it? I just got back. I did. I just got back from retreat, and I'm going to tell you about it real quick. Hey, Tony. Oh, no. Hi there. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> don't wear it, Tony. Don't wear it. I, I just wanted to ask you something. What? Do you know why bees hum? No, I don't. They don't know the word. <laughs> and that's Bill, our comedian. That's like to be in the car for that, for that for four hours, y'all. It ain't fun. <laughs> yeah, he scares me, y'all, because I don't know what's going to come out of that mouth. I don't never know. And he really scares me when I see him right here in front of my face. <laughs> You can't do stuff like that. <laughs> Wait till I call on you. <laughs> I just, I just got back from a men's retreat. I've never been on anything like that before. I was gone for three or four days. Yeah. The last thing that they gave to me, they, <laughs> I guess I, I'm, I'm kind of a crybaby, y'all. I guess so. They, they, they knew that I cried, so they stuck me over in the corner somewhere and they give me a bag, and they, and they, he put down two boxes of Kleenexes there beside them and he said sit right there and, and and look inside your bag so I started reading inside the bag and what <laughs> I'm gonna cry again so I started reading those letters in there and it was uh, the first one was from one of the guys and my spiritual leader and the second one was from his wife they're the ones that actually got me going and his wife said why don't you wait till you get in the truck to read these because there's a whole bunch of them in there so the third one was from another spiritual leader of mine. And then the fourth one, I thought, man, that sounds a lot like mom. Yeah. And lo and behold, it was a letter from mama. And then I got one from Jan and one from Chris and one from Wendy and uh, one from Pam and one from Dolan. And I, the, the more I read, the more I cried. So I cried for about th about three hours that day. And I about used up the whole two boxes of Kleenex. And so they kind of knew what was going on. But they was just telling me how much I meant to them. So I want to tell you something. You never know how much power you have in words, y'all. If somebody means something to you, tell them. Tell them. You mean the world to me. I appreciate what you do. You will never know how much that lifts somebody up. I, 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 have, I have read them letters probably 10 times, probably 10 times over. And it's not nothing that they haven't told me before, but getting to read that was, yeah. was one of the most wonderful things I think that's ever happened to me before. So I'm fool, y'all. And uh, I did say the next time we go to Charleston, we're going to have some church out there. And I, I plan on having that. And you guys evidently are ready to do that too. Now I'm going to tell you who all we are real quick. These two right over here, the brains of the operation. Whatever. This is the boss. <laughs> this is the boss, and this is the hard worker. <laughs> You're cleaning the worker bee right there. Appreciate them. They are the ones that that get get the sound get the sound right. And I look out there in the audience if I need more drums or something like that to him, and he's he's learning how to read my sign language, and that's not an easy thing, y'all. Cause I talk and he'll really. <laughs> but he learned, he's got where he learned it. His name is Chris, and her name is Wendy. And they, they do that part of it. And their, their son actually plays the lead guitar for us tonight. And I'm sorry you guys are not getting to hear him tonight because he is phenomenal. Yes, he, is. he is an incredible yes, he is. musician. <laughs> we miss, I miss him tonight, y'all. And not only I miss him, but you guys are missing something tonight, too. We appreciate him. His name is Seth. Have you, have you got anything else to do there, big boy? Have you got something else to say? Oh, I do, but I'm going to save it for you. <laughs> oh, that's scary. He's going to keep you on your toes. Uh, he's going to keep you on your toes. What am I just supposed to guess when he's going to do? I guess. <laughs> all right. He didn't tell me either. Raise your hand, Yank. We went and picked us up a Yank. We went all the way to Illinois to get her. <laughs> just, just so I can make fun of her. And I'll tell you. <laughs> I have, fun, I have fun doing it. She is from Peoria. Peoria, Illinois. And it makes her so upset when I put that S on there. But I'm just going by the spelling on it, y'all. And I just, she is one of the funniest toys. And she is one of my favorite toys that I've got. <laughs> Love her to death. Her name is Pamela Grew. And she is connected to... Here he is. Uh, 
steel player. He, he's usually he's usually over here, and I asked him tonight. And I said, "Will you get closer over here where I can where I can talk to you a little bit?" So he he got all of that. I almost made it too. Look, this is my fishing. This is my worm drowning buddy. I call him my fishing buddy. We don't catch very many fish. We drown a lot of worms though. Make a lot of fires and do a lot of. Uh, talking out there and, and uh, appreciating him. He plays the steel for us. And that's Mr. Ricky Perkins. Not right now, but he has something to say. Well, he ain't getting no chance. This is it. It's either now or there. You got something to say, buddy? I'll say it. Raise your hand, sissy. Right there. Ain't, there you go, Aunt Deb. This is the first time she's got to be with us in quite a little while. And, and uh, even though she don't go with us no whole lot, she is a big part of the Ruckmans. I promise you that. She supports us in, in ways that most people don't get to see. And we love her to death for that. Appreciate her. Probably going to get her up here in a little bit. Yes? We can. To sing. Yeah, to sing. We, we do old songs. We do old songs and older songs, y'all. So, and I know you guys know them, so I'll just get in and sing with them. But that's Aunt Dib. See, I'm scared to make sure I ain't missing nobody. Cause I got a lot of buddies here too. Crystal, huh? Crystal. Crystal, yeah, Crystal. I ain't got to read it. I'm a, I'm a, come here, this man. I, I look, look. I, I hold on to all the scraps I can, y'all. I have. I used to really care a whole lot about my hair. I used to have, and believe it or not, I had a head full of it at one time, and. Uh, <laughs> Hey, I'm talking right now. I told him, I said, look, you can't wear you can't wear your ponytail like it no more. I'm the ponytail person, so turn I'm mean, this is all the scraps I got left, y'all. Out of a pretty head of hair at one time and he and then he ain't went been playing with us but about this is two or three times that he's played with us and he come in last time I told him, I said, Look, you can't put your hair like that no more because it looks pretty your mind does. So I'm, but I'm still better looking than he is. Though. But he's he's been playing the bank. This your fourth time with us? Well, you should be doing a little bit better than what you're doing. <laughs> 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 hey, me and that boy have been friends since we was this. I'm not much higher than that now, but we were a little bit We've been we've been buddies for a long time. This is the first time we've actually got to play on stage together. Though that's Mr. Terry Qualls. <laughs> And that's his wife out there. That's his boss. That's not his wife. That's his boss and, and his wife. And her name is Crystal. We appreciate these guys so much. And let me see what my Danville. The comedian, the funny man right there. And one of the, <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, I'm really nervous, y'all, because I do not know what that guy's got in store for after a while. But his name is Bill. And her name is Janice. And she does the alto singing for us. And, we had, we actually, one night we was gonna sing, and Missy said, let's get a group together. And I said, nah, I'm in traveling, I'm tired. And uh, she said, oh, come on, let's get a group. Let's just get a singing together, because she knew that she got me in with some music people, and I'd probably go and start another group. So we, uh, she, got, she got Jan in there, and we started doing, I love harmony, y'all. I love harmony. I, that's what I grew up on after supper. And we have supper in Oklahoma. I don't know if you guys do an art star or not. Y'all got supper here? Or y'all got dinner? Supper. Dinner's lunch. There you go. Dinner's lunch. That's right. That's right. Dinner's lunch. That's right. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's the way I do it. And that's what we do in Oklahoma too. So after supper, we'd have, Daddy would get in there and he'd say, let's, let's sing, y'all. Uh, whenever you're, you're 10 or 12 years old, that's not what I wanted to hear. But that's what I did because... Daddy was six foot four, you know what I mean? I, I did what Daddy said. That's just the way we did. So we got together and we were singing, and I said, "Boy, the harmony show sure is pretty. Man, it's pretty harmony." And we yeah, we got together six years, about six years ago, ain't it? 180 churches in six years, and I'm telling you, man, they have went every mile with us. And I don't know what I do with. I just wouldn't do it without them. I'll just say that for them. We appreciate them so very much. Her name is Jan Stevens. Hi, everybody. Thank you all for having us. Look alive now. <laughs> this is this is my cancer free wife. Yeah. 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 
We found out when, when you, how many self-diagnosed with Google. Anybody do that out there? Huh? Oh, baloney. I know there's more than that, y'all out there. I know there's lots of people. Everybody does it. We had figured out that she had a bleeding ulcer. Wasn't that what we thought you had? Yes. And then uh, we went to the doctor, and he, he came back out, and he told me, he said, Tony, I went to pick her up, and he said, Tony, we found out from the blockage. And I said, okay, what is it, Doc? And he said, your wife's got cancer. That's like a kick in the stomach, y'all. But they told us that we were going to do surgery. We were going to do chemo. She was going to lose her hair. She was going to be asleep two, about two weeks out of the month. They told, they give us a long list of stuff that was going to happen. We started praying everywhere we went, y'all. Yeah, praying. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot tell me that prayer don't work because none of that garbage that they said was going to happen, her happen. None of it. None of it. And that's because I had brothers and sisters praying for her. And we just found out a couple of weeks ago that she is cancer free. That's my baby girl. Her name is Lindsay. When you get stage three colon cancer and then you find out you've got thyroid cancer on top of that, you wonder just how it's all going to end. Well, but I read the end of the book. And the end of the book says that no matter what happens down here on earth, my God wins. The end of the book says that he has gone to prepare a place for me because I have a relationship with Christ. I could not have made it without my helpmate. This is my helpmate. His name is Tony. He has been my nurse. He has walked beside me when I couldn't stand up straight. He has held me up when I couldn't stand on my own. He has done everything that I could ever think of needing. He is the most phenomenal keyboard player you will ever hear. And I'll argue with anybody who doesn't agree. His name is Tony Rutman. And we're really glad to be here. I told you. Tony, when that doctor came out and he said, I'm sitting in a wheelchair and I grabbed Tony's hand. Tony was sitting to my right and I grabbed his hand and I said, this does not stop our ministry. I said, this does not stop our ministry. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God has come to give us life and he has given us life and I will use every breath.
when I think. I told my family, I told our children, don't worry about me. Because God has prepared a place. And you know, in your darkest hour, when you're lying there in bed and not worried, he's as close as the mention of his name. And no matter what we do in this life, if we have a relationship with Jesus, he is going to be there. And he is going to do whatever it is that you need. He's going to meet needs that you don't even know you have. Tony, we have a list, and it's going right out the window right now, so I'm just telling you that. We're going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. There's an old song that we we like a whole lot. What can wash away my sins? I want you guys to raise the roof with us. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What?
should be, but we're here to worship the Lord. Yeah. Anyway, this is this song's called Christian in the House. How many Christians are in the house? Yeah. Woo! I think most all y'all were. <laughs> Before I saw hand raise, I can tell that about you. <laughs> we love this song.
started church and I said that we always try to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes that puts us and our musicians in an awkward position. Especially when the keyboard player's wife says, uh, Honey, tonight we've got to do leaning on the everlasting arms. And my husband, the keyboard player, says, uh, We don't do that song. And I said, But we do tonight. And so we gathered around the piano. And this particular church started at five, no, started at six. At five o'clock in the evening, people started coming in. And they went to a back room in a little bitty tiny church. And we could hear them calling out to the Lord. They were wanting revival in that place. They were wanting prayers answered. They had things that they needed the Lord to do. And so there they were, praying in the back, and here we are trying to figure out what key we're going to do this song that we've never done before. I mean, we'd all sang the song in church. But the Lord just spoke to me that this song has to be done tonight. So we gathered around and we started singing.
church that night. But a couple months later, that song was for me. That third verse, what have I to dread? What have I to fear if I'm leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus? Chemo scary, you guys. It terrified me. And I would sit in that chair as they pumped that poison into my body. And I would pray until I fell asleep. Then I would sit there for hours while they put, pumped it into me. And then they would put me in a, they would give me a bag to take home. And I wore it for two days. I went to work with it. I worked every day except for days that I had chemo or doctor's appointments. If that ain't God, I don't know what it is. But in my darkest times, and there was some dark times. What have I to dread? What have I to dread? On the everlasting arms. State Bank in Muskogee, and when I was little, I had those jelly shoes, and I liked them, and I'd slip my shoes off. I'd rather be barefoot any day than have shoes on. I'd take my feet off, and I'd rub them on the marble, marble floors of that bank. I think that walking on streets of gold, that's about as close as you can get that commercial State Bank. At least that's what I thought when I was a little girl. I wanted 
know how it feels to walk on those streets of hell.
For this is the sort that they which have creeped into houses and laid captive silly women laden with sin, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Guys, we are in the last days. Tony and I were talking the other day and yesterday. We were talking about the future and I said, well, I don't think we have to worry about that. And he said, why not? said, because I think the rapture is going to happen and I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. I don't think I'm going to have to worry about living life without him because I think that the rapture is going to happen. It's that close. And I know I was told for years that the Lord's coming back. In 1999, there were 99 reasons he was coming back in 99. The Bible says, no man know the day or the hour. But Jesus is coming soon. Oh, uh-huh. 
Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm going to ask Tony to pray. And we're going we're gonna to pray. And if you need prayer, this is, I just don't want to go home. I don't want to stop until everybody has what they need. Yes, Guys, it's time for us to quit being complacent. Yeah. It's time to bombard the throne yeah. of grace. He wants to work. Guys, I'm, I'm hungry for revival. But revival comes when we press after it. I'm going to ask Tony to pray. Father, as we come to you, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity again to worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. In a place, in a in a place that's free, Lord. Because they're trying to take that right away from us. But Father, no matter what happens, you're gonna have a people that's gonna stand up for you, Father. And I am gonna be in those people, Father. And Lord, we pray tonight, Lord, that there be someone here tonight, Lord, that is lost without you, Father, that they would not walk out those doors before they make it right. Lord, we thank you for the blood that you shed. Lord, we thank you for the healing that you've given for us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all the prices that you paid for us, Lord, when you went on the cross, Father. And Lord, we pray that if there's someone that needs a touch in their body tonight, Lord, that they would come up here and get it. And Lord, whatever's in the mind of the people out there, Father, we did a service not too long ago. And the ladies, the young lady, we prayed with her for a long time, Father. And whenever we left, Father, she was dead in a couple of days. Father, if there's someone out there that's got this in their mind, Father, we pray, Lord, that they would come up here tonight and make everything right, Father. And, Lord, we thank you for your many blessings, Lord, and we ask that you would just bless this service, Lord. Lord, if there be anyone here, Lord, that they would come and make it right tonight, Father. And we ask all these things in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 And, Debbie, I'm going to ask you to come on up here. Aunt Debbie has a, been a huge supporter of our ministry. She is, she's just real special to us, and she doesn't get to be with us very office, often anymore. Before we start, I just want to tell you how thankful I am. We've got some friends here. Um, Carla drove two hours um, just to be in service with us tonight, and I want to thank her. And Dolan and Barbara, we love it when you guys come and be in service with us. We appreciate you guys having us today. Sing with me.
opportunity a while ago. I don't want to get away from that just quite yet. Praise because I believe that this many people gathered here and I don't know how many is here but I know there's enough. Yes, there's enough God people filled with his spirit yes. with the power of God living inside of them. How many know you got dunamis power? Yes. You got dynamite living inside of you. His name is Jesus yes. and there ain't nothing he can't do. For it was for him and by him and through him everything was made. Not anything was made that was made it was not made by him and him alone. And he is everything to us and to you and to the world. The problem is the world don't know it yet. But they will. They will. On this, I don't want to be a slow learner. I want to be a quick learner. I learned a long time ago that Jesus is the king. And he's coming back again. And when the Lord says, go get your children, it's going to happen. And as the woman went, pressed through the crowd to get the, the hem of Jesus' garment, listen, you may be sitting here today, and God may have already begun a healing process in your body, but God is not completed it yet. I'm here to tell you God wants to work on you a little bit tonight. God wants to work on you a little bit tonight. If you're here tonight and you know God, you've been praying, God, touch my body, heal my body. Listen, this sister didn't come tonight by accident telling you that God is the God that can cure cancer. She's not just here on, on a whim. She is God sent tonight letting you know that she's a bona fide walking miracle. That cancer had to die. Praise the Lord. Cancer had to die. It can't live. When the word of God comes against it, it's got to bow. Because everything is going to bow in the name of Jesus. When the word of God speaks, the devil has to bow. Situations have to change. Circumstances have to take a different route. But God is in charge tonight. And he gave all power to Jesus Christ. And I believe Jesus is here tonight to touch your heart, touch your life. If you're sitting here tonight and you're hurting in your body, uh, we're not in a big hurry tonight, are we? My, my. Don't we have time for Jesus to touch somebody tonight? Don't we have time for Jesus to touch somebody? Jesus came to a man one day and he said, Will thou be made whole? And he said, Lord, every time I start to get in the water, somebody steps in front of me. Jesus didn't let him take him away from his question. Jesus said, Will thou be made whole? Do you want to be healed? My question to you tonight is, do you want to be touched by the Lord Jesus tonight? Do you? Are you here? Stand to your feet if you're here and you need to be touched by the Lord tonight. Here comes one right there. Line up and come on. You know you're here tonight and you need a touch from God. You know you're here tonight. You need that disease to die that's in your body tonight. You need a touch from God. Shaw's not the only one. Come on. Who else needs a touch from God? Somebody else needs a touch from God. Come on. Come on. Today's not the day to be bashful. As the group sang to you tonight, today's the day that God will do it for you. Today's the day that God will touch you and heal you. 
Praise the Lord. It's got some preachers out there. Come and help us pray. You're a preacher or you're a God, a called man that lays your hands on people or a woman that lays your hands on people. Come on. Come on. Hey, COVID is dead in the name of Jesus. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, this is my uh, son-in-law. I want to see him healed. He was diagnosed with cancer, had a stem cell tra transplant, and still God is still touching him today. God is still touching him today. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of